This is Will Spencer from the Renaissance of Men here with the New 21 Report and Ian Smith of Attila's Gym in New Jersey. How are you doing, Ian? Good What's to see up, you. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, doing really well. How are you? Good. Man, Good. how was your talk today? It was awesome. It was awesome. A little bit different than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. uh, much more intimate environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I liked it. It was allowed for the, the personal aspects of the story to come out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the longer format was, was nice to be able to give the, the whole story mm -hmm. and not just the highlight reel because I think there's a lot of important lessons for men in there. Yeah, what were some of the things you got to share with the men here at 21 that you don't normally get a chance to talk about? Well, you know, typically I'm in front of a more political audience. Mm -hmm. You know, m most of my talks are at medical freedom rallies, pro-freedom rallies, stuff like that. So the, the format is the same. I tell the story, you know, because it's an interesting one about what Frank and I did, mm -hmm. keeping the gym open during COVID. But um, I try to leave people with some, some things that I've learned. You know, mm -hmm. people are going to take what they want from the speech and they'll learn stuff. But there's, there's important points that, that myself and Frank have learned you know, in the process. So I try to wrap the speech up with that. And it was just a little bit different today mm -hmm. in terms of what the, the messages were. You know, I spoke about the importance of brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, because if it was just me or if it was just Frank doing it, it couldn't have been done. Yeah. You know, we, we relied on each other and we, we built we built a connection with each other that helps us both be able to, to perform, but also keeps us sort of sane through the fight. And, and you know, the, the weight of the world is, is too much to carry for one man. No matter mm -hmm. how big and strong you are, no matter what battle you're fighting, it's always good to have brothers around you. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they make you better. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned that not only with my, you know, my my brotherhood with Frank, but the, the tribe of the gym, that, mm -hmm. that important aspect of, of building a, a tribe of people who are of like mind, who you can depend on, who hold you accountable, who will call you on your BS. Um, and I don't think that there's enough of that today, mm -hmm. but those things need to be consciously created. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I do believe that they're consciously being destroyed. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood, community, yeah. consciously yeah. being, yeah, Absolutely. I agree. Um, so that was lesson number one. Lesson number two is the importance of your word. Mm. You know, um, we made a promise to each other that we were gonna see this through no matter how ugly and nasty it got. And mm. It's gotten pretty ugly and nasty and, and I don't ever have to worry about Frank um, not holding up his end of the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, we're business partners, but it's beyond that. You know, Frank gave me his word and I gave him my word that we were gonna, we were gonna keep our gym open mm. no, matter, no matter what. Um, and, and knowing that your word is good um, and having a track record of that makes your relationships better, but also knowing that the, the word of others, you know, the, those brothers that you trust, that, that tribe that you trust, um, knowing that their word is something that you can depend on changes things, mm -hmm. you know, because you can let your guard down a little bit, you can focus on other things and not have to worry about the what ifs of, you know, a, a shaky agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really just wrapped up about the, <clears throat> the big lesson is that agreeable men leave weak legacies mm -hmm. and agreeable men sit on the sidelines as the world turns. And culturally we've been conditioned and pushed towards this agreeable, soft, compliant man. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're watching watching society rapidly change around us in, in some not so good ways. Mm -hmm. And it's because men are not standing up anymore mm -hmm. um, or not enough, you know, and that used to be something I think that was far more common where men would call out BS where they see it. Um, you know, now everybody's so worried about getting criticized and, you know, God forbid you speak up your, your toxic masculinity or your mansplaining mm -hmm. or your whatever. Um, and all those things are just smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. They're not real things. Um, so it, I try to tell these guys to, to be less agreeable, you know, to, to question, mm -hmm. to challenge. You know, it's not about being an asshole. It's not about uh, being combative, but it's, you know, I, I use the example of, of pack, pack animals, mm -hmm. right? The alpha is always being challenged. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they don't respect the alpha. It doesn't mean that, you know, uh, they're trying to overthrow the system, um, but they're challenging the people in charge. And that keeps the people in charge able to be in charge and do the best job possible, but it also keeps the whole group energized and sort of moving in a direction where everybody is constantly getting better because of that, that challenge. 
So it's the lessons I, I got out of that just for these guys. You know, it, like I said, it's different for every crowd, but sure. you know, these are, these are men in this audience who are looking to better themselves. It's not necessarily a political thing. It's a, it's a personal and an individual thing. Were these themes that you'd thought about beforehand, or was like it, the, speaking at 21 forced you to kind of think about, well, what would I say about masculinity to a bunch of men curious about the topic? Um, it's stuff I've thought about, mm -hmm. you know, through my own desire to understand what it means for me to be a man and, and what value system that I have. <clears throat> but uh, speaking at the 21 convention has forced me to to put those into more more than just a fleeting thought mm -hmm. you know and, and really think about it and and take a look at, at at our story the story of Frank and I and the story of Attilus and try to find some gems in there because there's a lot you know but there's a lot of gems in there for a lot of people so yeah I think these are some of the most important things that you can take away if you're just looking to be a better man mm -hmm. looking back so let's turn back a clock like two three years something like pre-covid would you have ever thought that you'd be a public speaker to thousands of men and women around the world? No, no, <laughs> um, not at all. Um, you know, you would have asked me two years ago if I could have had any impact on the world, I would have told you like, no, I'm just one person or you know, whatever the standard answer to that would be. Um, but here we are 20 months into the, the COVID madness and uh, Frank and I have inspired millions of people around the world i mean we've yeah you know it's hundreds of thousands i don't know it's a lot it's millions um million, yeah. and we're just two regular guys mm -hmm. like like we say we're just two dumb gym owners <laughs> um you know but we 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 did something that people respected mm -hmm. um and we never we never faltered from that no matter what came at us mm -hmm. it was always in our hearts and our minds we knew that we were doing the right thing and, and we continued to do it even when it got harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, it, it, it's just been, a, it's, a, it's, it's been an awesome journey. Mm -hmm. It really has. As you look back to previous phases of your life, can you kind of see shades maybe, you know, you put the pieces together looking backwards and not looking forward. Can you see like, okay, I can see some of the things that might have lined up to make me this? Yeah, you know, they, the, the woman, um, you know, the book is written um, collectively sort of by, mm -hmm myself and Frank and um, <clears throat> mainly the, uh, the author who's, who, who finds stories like this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and she's, a, she's a storyteller. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she lives through something with people or, you know, uh, she recounts it through, through stories um, that they tell and, and, and others, but she has said that quite a bit. Sorry, the book you mentioned? Yeah, the, uh, the author of the book. Has which, which book? Uh, there's a book coming out oh. called Two. I'm sorry. There's a book coming out called Two Dumb Gym Owners. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's okay. the story of Attila's Gym and Frank and I. Oh, wow. Um, with a little bit of our backstory and just the details of, of the battle. Mm -hmm. um, and the woman who wrote it, um, or who wrote the, the bulk of it, had, has said that numerous times. Mm -hmm. You know, because she's asking about early experiences and stuff like that. You know, she's, she's an author. She's, she's curious and she's asking questions. And she said that several times. She's like, yeah, this, this was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, like wow. you guys just didn't know that. And I, I don't know, but I guess from somebody else's perspective, you know, to us, we just stumbled into it. Mm -hmm. You know, the fight came to our doorstep and Frank and I had to make a hard choice and we made it. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened to be a really good one too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess there's a lot that kind of leads up to, to something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a lot of pieces that, that are there for a while and don't make a lot of sense. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they kind of fall together. Mm -hmm. Did you find the men were receptive to your message about you know, brotherhood and your word? Yeah, very much so. Uh, men are men are in general are hungry for that right yeah. now. Um, and men are also very aware now that women are very hungry for true men. Um, so you're, you you have a surge in the uh, the interest um, for uh, of of just figuring out what it is to be a man, mm -hmm. figuring out what your value systems are. You know what what do you care about? What do you not care about? Where where are your boundaries? You know these kinds of things is typically we don't ask ourselves these things anymore. Mm -hmm. You know these that was once I, I think a normal part of life for men. Mm -hmm. You know we we sat long and hard and we thought about our values or we were taught our values and. These days, it's just not. But you have this resurgence, this renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, it's but it's true. You know, yeah. you, you you have a good title for a reason. Um, Thank you. It is. It's this. It's this renaissance where, you know, men are are suddenly opening their eyes and looking around and saying, I I I don't I don't like this. I don't like where I'm at. I don't like who I not 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 that you don't like who you are, but I'm not I'm not as good as I could be. Mm-hmm. You know and. How do I get better? Where do I start? Mm-hmm. You know, what do I start with? Do I go to the gym? Do I read books? You know, so you have this huge community that's that's just rapidly expanding, and, and these guys are more than ready to learn and to put into practice. Mm-hmm. So, the, it, awesome crowd in there. Yeah, I saw you having you know some conversations with some of the men last night at dinner, and then afterwards, like, what sort of things were the guys talking about? Asking about your story, just sharing stories back and forth, or what was I like? You know, it's it, it's you have you have guys that are just trying to figure out their own shit, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of questions that that are mainly guys just looking where to start. Mm-hmm. You know, because that that's the big thing. Once you get momentum and you start kind of understanding more about yourself, that it's a, it's a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. You know, you. You can use the example of the gym, which is just one of many avenues you can take to start improving yourself. You know, you, you go to the gym and you're nervous and you know nothing what you're doing and you look stupid and you feel stupid and you, you know, um, you're doing stuff wrong. You know, but once you like start getting those little wins, and you know, you you see that first change or you you you, you walk in the gym for the first time and you know you're not thinking about everything and you just go get like a really good workout. It that that snowballs very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I think you have a lot of guys right now at that initial phase where they're just looking for the first steps. You mm-hmm. know? So you have a lot of questions. Um, guys who are now thinking, hey, maybe I can start something in my area. You know, maybe I can, maybe I can, can convince some of my friends to be interested in this too, and maybe I can form my own little tribe. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what that's what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got a lot of questions about stuff like that, and you know it's that, that's the big thing. People are looking at where to start because mm-hmm. a lot of people are just now kind of tuning in mm-hmm. and 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 being brutally honest with themselves and saying I need to I need to get better. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You mentioned women being hungry for authentic masculinity, and we have the 22 convention going over that going on over there. Have you interacted with any of the women, yeah. either guests or speakers? What have they said to you? Uh, same thing most of the women that I come across say, mm-hmm. you know, um, I started being a political activist with, with all of this and, you know, we would go to these, um, these rallies and stuff and it would be like nine to one women to men. Yeah, I remember you tweeting about that. <clears throat> and I mean, it, that's, and you talk to these women and, and you know, I, I've, I've, I speak at these rallies, I talk to these women, they, they thank Frank and I for what we've done and they, they tell us that they wish you know their husbands would stand up or they they wish that they that they could find men who will stand up and it's like there's nothing inherently special about us mm-hmm. and but these women are just looking for men with character and conviction mm-hmm. um and because so many men have just like kind of tuned out they're they're missing these opportunities mm-hmm. you know and it, it's you're having this huge disconnect between good women women of high value um that men should want um, and should desire and, and the men that would be filling those roles in, in these women's lives. And there's this disconnect because men have tuned out mm. and, and they're distracted and they are holding the wrong things of high value. Mm. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's incredible the amount of messages that I get in my inbox uh, on a daily basis that are women who say literally the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you get women like, man, like there should be a, a dating app for, for patriotic men. You know, there should be mm-hmm. a, a dating app for, for men who will, you know, who will stand in support of whatever. You know what I mean? They're just, they're so tired of what they've been force fed with feminism and, and this third, whatever wave of feminism mm-hmm. we're on at this point. Um, that even the women who subscribe to that don't respect the men that they're with. They're looking for something bigger and stronger and, and more masculine. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think if <laughs> once guys realize that, it's a pretty good motivator for most men. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as it's always been. Mm, it's, really cool. it's all, women, women have always been a motivator for men. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, women motivate us to do incredible things. Amen. Because women, women are our mothers and our sisters and our daughters. And there's nothing more beautiful and sacred and important to a man than, than that. Because what legacy do you leave if you leave nothing behind? Mm-hmm. You know, it, these are these are the the women that will bear your children. These are the women that will raise your children. These are the women that will hold your family together while you go out into the world and be a man. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is just a a huge demand for men to step up and start filling those roles. That's really incredible. I was yeah. talking yesterday on a panel and uh, sort of had the thought that there are a lot of people out there that think masculinity is the problem. The feminists think masculinity is the problem. Yeah. But you know, masculinity, it's the opposite. It's the solution. And it's really re- its really encouraging to hear that women are recognizing that masculinity is the solution because in, on the ground in many men's lives, it wouldn't be, seem to be the case that people feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. But you see the, you see the opposite of women saying, like, no, we need more masculinity. You're on the ground with that. Absolutely. You know, we are... You need both. Yeah. You know, you, you need the inherent characteristics of both mm-hmm. to have any any good um, working system, mm-hmm. whether that be a, a, a one-on-one relationship um, or whether that be society as a whole. Mm-hmm. There has to be a good balance of those characteristics of masculinity and, and femininity. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to be tough. We have to be rugged. We have to be firm. Um, we have to be able to protect these are all masculine qualities. We have to be able to compete and push the ball forward. Um, but at the same time, we do need that softer side, mm-hmm. um, that emotion, that caring, you know, all, all of these things that women bring to the table. But what has happened is masculinity has been pushed out of culture mm-hmm. um, and demonized by culture. And it's been overtaken, not by feminine qualities, but by hyper feminine qualities. Mm-hmm. They've, the 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 spectrum is skewed. Mm-hmm. There should be a balance. Mm-hmm. You know, what exactly that balance is, I think that's up to the culture, but we've skewed so far that there's, there's very little masculine energy mm-hmm. in our culture at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, look at, look at the men who get catapulted to the top of our culture. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we idolize actors. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what is an actor? What kind of man? And, and again, you, you, nothing, nothing against the, the, the job of acting, but like what, what kind of man it just pretends to be other people for a reason. And these are, but, but, but these are the people we idolize, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and even if you look at the way like the, the film industry and in Hollywood has changed, mm-hmm. you know, look at your, look at your action stars <laughs> back in the 1970s. Mm-hmm. Who were they? They were rugged men. Mm-hmm. They were men. Tom Selleck, stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, and, Burt Reynolds. and look at your look at your action stars now. I mean, look at your like your look at the guy who plays Spider Man. Like yeah. that that's a hero. Yeah. That's like a flimsy soy boy. <laughs> yeah. The new Batman, Robert Pattinson. Well, yeah. exactly. You know, Bat- Batman used to have like a, a barrel chest and and, yeah. and well, you know, he was he was a man. You know, he was rugged. He was rough. He was there was there was a darkness to him. There was. Um, there was some masculinity to him. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's, he just, as long as he doesn't offend anybody, you know, he can keep doing his job saving the, saving the world, but God forbid. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, and that's just one of, of many examples where you've had this, this major dilution of masculinity. You know, even our, look at our sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, football. Mm-hmm. Mm. You're not allowed to like, I mean, it's, they might as well just, just do flag football, right. you know, every, every year. And again, it, it's, again, you don't want guys to get hurt, whatever, Obviously, but yeah. it's, it's a sport. Mm-hmm. You're banging heads, you're knocking heads. You know, it's like, they used to wear leather helmets, mm-hmm. you know, and they used to get out there and, 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 and just wallop each other. Rugby. And, yeah. And it's like, now it's, you know, you, you got guys like LeBron James who like, if you, if, if, if he smells your breath, he falls over. Like, it's just, and it, it's. That's that's such an insult to the the competitive nature of of life, mm-hmm. and it's like, but we put these people up on pedestals, and then mm-hmm. and then we wonder why we make no forward progress, or why we're in this this disarray where we have this hyper emotional society that's just super reactionary. You know, you, you look at pe- the way people communicate; everything's based on emotion now. Mm-hmm. 
And it's like, where's the, where's the critical thinking? Where, where's, the, where's the facts? Mm -hmm. You know, facts don't matter anymore in our society. It's all about how you feel. Well, the right facts matter a lot, but yeah. the wrong facts, they don't matter at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, uh, but it's, we have too much feminine energy. And we, have, mm. we, have, we don't have good feminine energy either. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's another issue is we've gotten so far from what is truly feminine energy mm -hmm. Just like they changed ma the masculine energy, mm -hmm. you know, to what I was talking about, you know, soy boys and, and dulling down masculinity, they've they've contorted what it means to be a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, the the fifth wave of progressive feminists came by and and celebrate, you know, sexual liberation, and it's like that's great, that's great. A woman should be sexually liberated, absolutely. Does that mean she should go out every Friday night and sleep with another man? No. You know what I mean? And the, but they're lying to these women. They're they're mm -hmm. giving them false value systems, and these women are 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 winding up very unhappy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I how many women wind up in their thirties after they've partied their twenties away, quote unquote liberated, um, having no value on the dating market anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go on any dating app. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. You know. Open up Tinder or whatever they're whatever they're called today, and you know, go through there, and you're going to find a bunch of weak men mm -hmm. who who offer nothing to the women who are on there looking mm -hmm. um, and the women on there they don't offer much because uh, men of high value are not interested you know in that and they they but they they they've been sold the lie mm -hmm. you know like <clears throat> you should be able to go out and work absolutely i believe in quality all that stuff that's great choice. It's yeah, fantastic yeah. but a woman who chooses to be a mother should not be demonized or made to feel less because that's what she wanted to do with her life. Yes. You know, it, it's, I'm all for equality. You know, you wanna, you wanna dedicate your life to work? Awesome. But the woman who gets pregnant at 18 years old and married, you know, and, and has three, four kids and is a stay at home mom and who has never worked a job is just as much, if not more, of a beautiful woman than some woman who makes $100,000 a year because right. that's what they're judging their standards on. Right. It's material, economic yeah. only. Like, but there's so much more to a woman than that. And then you know you, you tie that into you know a, you hear a lot of women they say well you know uh, you have to be financially independent these days, you know and I mean it's like yeah, yes I mean, but yeah. if you choose the right man you'll never have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And but we're not doing that. We we don't even choose our partners with care anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's it's the energy is skewed just mm -hmm. terribly. There's weak masculine energy and there's almost aggressive feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And they've got that totally flip-flopped around. Mm -hmm. and, but it's, and I think that's truly by design. I think that creates a weak and controllable society. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. We're seeing it, we're seeing it now. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. So you carry yourself as a man who's kind of proven yourself to yourself, right? You've had the opportunity to be tested in some really difficult circumstances, both in life and, and I guess you might say out there in the world to how you're going to show up as a man. And it would be possible for a man to be as big and strong as you are and not have those questions answered about himself. And now you've answered them. So you show up in the world a different way now. As you're out there in the public, going through airports, traveling around the world, you know, even if people don't recognize who you are, how do you find that men and women respond to you like really showing up in the world and being visible? Um, yeah, it, it, it tells you a lot about who the person is by, based on how they respond to you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, uh, I've yet to have anybody ever come and, and truly challenge, you know, Frank and I got a lot of criticism for opening our gym and all that. And there was hate mail and phone calls and, you know, nobody ever said anything to Frank or I in person, yeah, no. you know, um, but the the way that people react does tell you a lot. You know, you have, um, you can tell who doesn't like you and is who is threatened by your presence. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's so funny because they won't ever address the situation. Like, f you, you can feel, if, if you pay attention, you can feel it and you can see it. Um, you know, but these these are the people that will never confront you. Mm -hmm. And these are also the people that will criticize you endlessly behind a, a telephone. Mm -hmm. um, those people exhibit a lot of control over a lot of men. Mm -hmm. um, because so many men are afraid of that criticism. They, they've, 
they think that that criticism that they seen or maybe experienced online is actually real. Mm. And the fact is, it's it's not. It's not you know, these people will never say or do anything. And, and even if they do, it's 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 a, it's a test for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you the, you should welcome these kind of situations where people don't like you, <laughs> um, because it will solidify who you are mm -hmm. to yourself, like, like you were saying, you, know, you, you wind up proving yourself to yourself. And that's probably one of the, one of the best things a man can do mm -hmm. is know, know who you are, know where you stand, know where your lines are, know what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate, uh, and how you'll react when you're under a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, you feel the, when you feel the pressure, do you fold? Do you, you know, how do you react? And you know, I said it in the speech, um, you know, uh, somebody had asked about like, taking a stand with masks and stuff like that. And, you know, on the surface, that's very stupid, right? It's, it's very superficial, like, oh, it's just a mask. You know? sure. um, but the reality is, is that if you can't say no to somebody telling you to put a mask on your face, what, what bigger battles are you prepared to conquer? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if the, you know, the, 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 the greeter at Walmart is enough to scare you into compliance. You know, like, what happens when, when somebody knocks on your door and says it's time for your booster shot and you don't want one? Mm -hmm. You know, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be COVID related, but mm -hmm. you should welcome those challenges. Mm -hmm. And you should, you should walk around um, welcoming and, and being ready for them. Because mm -hmm. um, the reality is they don't come nearly as often as you think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of fun knowing that you bother people. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, when I sit down on the plane um, without a mask, or I, you know, I'm, I'm in a store without a mask, um, and you can physically feel someone start to like get uncomfortable um, just because of your presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's good because you're actually doing them a, a, a service as well. Mm. Um, whether they realize it or ever realize it or not. You know, you're forcing them to think a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and if you have the opportunity to interact with somebody like that, you can point out the absurdity and, and maybe you'll get through to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, guys should welcome that mm -hmm. because it's, it's healthy, it's good, it's how you grow. Mm -hmm. You get approached a lot, or you tweet about being approached by women to put on masks. You know, do, you find, do you find the way that women react to you is different on all kinds of the spectrum? Well, Yes, actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, when when you talk about who have I actually been approached by, mm -hmm. it's always it's it's always it's always a if you close your eyes and you're like college ed educated liberal hyper feminist and like close your eyes and think of like who that person looks like, it's always them. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? I can see it. Um, you know, and they but it's funny because they exhibit the same type of qualities they cl they claim to hate. Mm. You know, like, what if I walked up to a woman? I was like, put a mask on your face. Th that would be, I mean, they would call that violence. Yeah. You know what I mean? But these same people who, who talk about toxic masculinity will walk right up to you and berate you, yell at you, call you names, you know, accuse you of, of things you haven't done. Um, and it's always women, mm -hmm. and it, but it's always the same type of woman. Mm -hmm. so it's, al it's always the, the, the do-gooder who's never really accomplished much mm -hmm. um, and blames the world for everything she's never done. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Or he, you know, and the, yeah. there's, there's plenty of them too, but the, the, the men who look and feel, or look and, or excuse me, feel like that also are muzzled and, and won't say anything because they've been taught that they're not allowed to. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they let the women speak. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's funny. But most, most women do not think like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's a loud m minority of people who have been gifted by the media and the institutions. Um, they've been given a, a bigger voice than they actually have. Mm -hmm. um, most women are more than happy to see a man being a man. Mm -hmm. you know, that's like been your experience because you've been out there. 100%. Down the, that's one, incredible to hear. Uh, overwhelmingly 
in support of, of men being men, stepping right. up, being assertive, um, when necessary, being aggressive, um, standing up to, especially to authority mm -hmm. is, is a big one with women right now, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they're wondering how, how has all this happened? Mm -hmm. And it's because men haven't stood up to authority in a really long time. We've turned into yes men. We've turned into agreeable men. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all of a sudden, government is in your life telling you that your child needs to wear a mask at school, or you know, um, kids over the age of five need to be vaccinated. And, and and now 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 mom instinct is is really kicking in for a lot of these women. And, and but they're wondering, saying like, why are we here? Why didn't this stop? A long time ago yeah. and they're they're upset and they're rightfully upset because that's not their job to be on the front lines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know women have a very particular skill set that that is very helpful with this kind of stuff but they're organizers they're communicators they're facilitators uh, they shouldn't be the only ones showing up at these protests mm -hmm. they shouldn't be the ones with their kid in hand mm -hmm. going to marching on the state capitol about you know about mask mandates for their children in school mm -hmm. you know they should be there but they should be behind the men mm -hmm. because the men, that's what the, that's what the men are supposed to do. They're supposed to protect, mm -hmm. supposed to protect the families first, their community second, and their country's third, mm -hmm. three circles. And, and we're not doing any of that collectively. So you're, you're talking about a dynamic that I've actually been really curious about because the, I've been in situations where I've seen like couples walking around the city or whatever, and he's wearing a mask and she isn't. And I haven't been able to figure that out. And you're talking about the same dynamic where the women are out front leading and the men are staying behind. They're like, well, maybe the men are working or something like that. Yeah. But which there's valid some, to a point. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. It's like, but there's a point at which I'm hearing you say that it's not valid. And there are guys that are like, you know what, honey, I'm just not going to go protest. And they're checking out of the fight. That that must be going on. That's incomprehensible to me. And yet I know it's going on. So maybe that's related to he's wearing a mask because she's not, a, because you would know a ton about this having seen it out in the world, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> men have been neutered. Whether they realize it or not, it, it's, our generation is significantly weaker than the one that has come before us, sure. and, and even more significantly weaker than the one that has come before them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that's a disservice. Yeah. It's a disservice to the men that have built the world around you and, 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 and your bloodline and, and your legacy. Mm. Um, mm. You're letting the world change because you're afraid of getting yelled at by the Walmart attendant. Mm. That's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it really is. It, it's, it's, especially when you know something is wrong. You know, it's one thing if like you're one of these guys that never watches the news and whatever. Like, okay, you got you got a little pass. You're not on social media. Sure. You know, okay, get it, cool. But you should be. You should be. Mm -hmm. It's it's your duty to protect, and you can't protect if you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. So that excuse, like, oh, I don't watch the news. It's like, well, that time has passed. Mm -hmm. Turn it on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't get obsessed with it. But know what's going on in your in your family, in your household. A lot of men are tuned out of their households. They go to work, they come home, they turn on the TV, they go to sleep, they wake up the next day. Mm -hmm. The woman is just raising the child by herself. True. Now, granted, you know, she's the mother, she's, she's stay at home, whatever, but that doesn't mean that your job ends when you clock out at work. You know, mm -hmm. you, you come home and you, you support your wife like she supports you mm -hmm. while you're at work, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so men are, men are checking out. They're not paying attention. They're not paying attention to their families. They're not paying attention to their communities and they're not paying attention to their country and that's that needs to change you know like i was i was outside the other day and we were walking through i was driving through the city um and people are just walking through the city with their face down it's like mm -hmm. you live in a beautiful place mm -hmm. appreciate the architecture i don't know appreciate something mm -hmm. you know other than your, your phone mm -hmm. um and maybe if you start appreciating stuff you'll have, have more of a reason to fight Mm -hmm. and more of a desire to fight and to, to stand up and protect. Mm -hmm. um, so, but social media is this double-edged sword. You know, for Frank and I and Attilus, it was one of many essential things sure. that kept us and allowed us, uh, kept us safe and allowed us to, to be so bold. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we obviously, there, there was a lot more to it, but uh, the media gave us a little bit of a head start and we were able to parlay the media attention into um, into social media and, and we essentially developed our own platform where we could 
rally support, we could communicate with people, we could put out information, we could share other people's stuff. You know, I can't tell you how many small businesses who reopened and said, hey, can you post us? Absolutely. Done. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's no sweat off our back. Mm -hmm. um, and even if it helps get you five people in the door, mm -hmm. those five people might bring five more yeah. and so on yeah. and so on. Um, so social media is interesting. You know, you're, you <laughs> you're dealing with an extremely powerful tool um, that is currently being utilized in some not so good ways mm -hmm. um, by some not so good people. Mm. You have um, active suppression of speech mm -hmm. in a country where that's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and you have this marriage of big corporations and government where they start to watch out for each other. Mm -hmm. they, they decide they're on the same team. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have Facebook and Instagram and stuff who are, again, actively suppressing free speech. Mm -hmm. And it's being greenlit by the government. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, that's slippery slope. Yeah. You know, that's... When the government starts okaying it and making excuses for companies that are infringing upon your rights, you know, that's, that's something that we should, we should be careful of. But at the same time, you need it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people pick up their phone, right? So even say, say you don't said screw social media. You know, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make, you know, 21convention.com, mm -hmm. okay? Who picks up their phone and opens their web browser first? Right. Nobody. Right. Who picks up their phone and opens up Instagram first? Probably about 80% of people pick mm -hmm. up their phone. Yeah. Um, so if you want to communicate with the world, you have to communicate through there, even if only partially. Mm -hmm. So you have, to learn to, you have to learn to utilize it, use it for what it's worth, but you have to also re realize it's not your, that's not your world. Mm -hmm. That's not your game. You know, the real world is. And so use it for what it's worth. Be very aware of its pitfalls, because there are many. Um, and, and keep it moving and, and live more in the real world. Pay mm -hmm. attention to what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's rare to hear a man hearing, making a call, men need to be on social media. You don't hear that often. Mostly you hear a lot of unplug, get off social media, which I don't think is wrong, but it's just unusual to say, no, the fight is on social media mm -hmm. as well, and you've got to be there to be in the fight, just mm -hmm. like you've got to be in the real world. Yeah, there's a, ba there's a balance to be struck, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say to men who are considering coming to 21 or coming to the Patriarchs event or even women considering coming to 22 convention? These are the type of places where <clears throat> if you want to make a change, it's a good place to start. And even if you've been making change and you want to make more, it's a good place to be. You're, the one, thing I, one thing I learned this past year, year and a half, two years, wow. um, <laughs> The power of networking, the power of networking. And, and we've, we've gotten really rusty at that, I think, collectively. Mm -hmm. You know, we take a look at any random sample, especially of a man, right? Or even of a, of a woman. What happens to your social circle past 20? You know, mm -hmm. it, it shrinks. Mm -hmm. What happens past 25? It shrinks more. Mm -hmm. What happens at 30? Most guys, most guys wind up feeling very alone. Mm -hmm. You know, their buddies have gotten married. You know, whatever, or, or even they're married, and they no longer communicate every day with their with their tribe. They lose that tribe. Their, their tribe gets smaller, um, and that's uh, it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I've witnessed the power of having a good network. I have a tremendous network around me at the gym. And because of that, we've been able to do some pretty incredible things. We've been able to grow as individuals at the gym. Frank and I have gotten better and stronger, and, and we're better businessmen now. Um, we're better men now. But we have this tremendous network. But you have to build that network or that tribe, whatever you want to call it, consciously. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't do that by just sitting around. You know, you gotta, you got to make the investment, whether it's your time, your money. You, know, you come out to something like this, and, and you don't just come out and attend, you come out and you consciously attend. You exchange numbers, you discuss ideas, you put yourself out there. You know, you don't be afraid to jump into a conversation mm -hmm. and start talking with these people because people who are coming here are coming here to discuss big ideas, mm -hmm. important ideas. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have that opportunity going to the bar on a Friday night. You're not. You know, you're, if anything, you're going to be yelling at each other, you know, over over the music. Um, so it's a it's a place where you can start to develop the resources that you will need to be a better person. 
Awesome. Where can men and women go to help you and Frank and Attilas and the fight overall? So uh, our website is theattilasgym.com, and that's A-T-I-L-I-S. That's how you spell Attilas. Um, we're on social media, obviously. <laughs> um, the Attilas Gym is our Instagram. Uh, I am Ian Smith Fitness. That's where you'll find me on all social media. That's all, always my handle. I tend to be loudest on Instagram. Um, that's just kind of the way that it unfolded, and that's where my platform is. And that's it. If you want to, want to come by the gym, we more than welcome that anytime. As you know, mm -hmm. um, we're open every single day, and and the the best way to support us is to just follow the story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always about um, you know where can I donate, mm -hmm. which. Obviously, we appreciate that quite a bit because we don't charge our members until we're done with this legal battle. But the thing that has kept us alive is that people care about what we've done. Mm -hmm. you know, so follow along. Follow us on social media. We always give updates. It's a story that's not yet concluded. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're getting to the point now where things are starting to happen in court. So mm -hmm. follow along and you know, maybe you'll be inspired to, to find uh, something to fight for for yourself. Amen. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you. Great to see you. You too, man. Thank you. Thank you. This is Will Spencer from the Renaissance of Men here with the New 21 Report and Ian Smith of Attila's Gym. Thanks so much.